I am I I am doing all right. I was uh back on the East Coast until yesterday. Hey, it's a wedding. Yes, my cousin got married. It was lovely. Now, okay, you're from an Irish family, so saying my cousin got married, there's like which of the dozen? I mean, yes. <laughs> she, this is actually she's kind of she's kind of the first of the like newer, younger generation of cousins to get married. You know, like if you have a big family, like you have like tears and like you'll have like 10 weddings over three years and then none for like 10 years. But then the next generation kind of grows up. And so she's kind of the first domino in the next wave. And then the, then the, that other generation comes back around once they've gotten rid of the first uh, spouses, they got the good ones. The second go around with the spouses. I guess I didn't, I didn't bother having a wedding the second time. <laughs> yep. First one cost me like 20 grand. Yeah. So we were like for that, we could just take a baller vacation. Ah, <sighs> so it's, uh, it's that time yeah, again. Not big weddings, by the way, people are going to get mad at me for that. I think if you want a big wedding, you should have a big wedding. You should live your best life. Um, I did it once. I didn't feel like I needed to do it again. That's all I'm saying. So it's, uh, it's that time of year again. First we have regular, what the fuck is wrong with you? We're going to go do that immediately after we're going to have the other thing, which is going to be out of order on YouTube, but I'm kind of doing it early because I'm trying to appease the YouTube God. We'll talk about that later, but this week. Yeah. I don't want to be like too late on it. Yeah. Cause the, the all, the all high algorithm, which you got to catch the zeitgeist. Not that I got to catch the click through impressions. <laughs> like Jesus Christ. All right. Um, let's get that intro set up. I realized my intro last week, I, I will apologize if you regularly watch because the intro last week kind of broke everything. Um, the yeah, music, the music went kind of I'm like, okay, great. That's that sounds wonderful. I, I'm sure everyone will love Which that. It's funny if you think about the fact that you followed up our bit last week of the review of the movie Unfriended. Yeah. That's all about like weird computer shit. Well, this week, hopefully, I'm going to be riding this thing. Got the sliders here. Behave yourself. All right. Let's get the intro. Behave yourselves. There we go. That's much better. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And uh, we're going to kick this one off in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. I have to clarify because if, if you're not in America, the joke is every there's Springfields everywhere. Every state does seem to have one. Yeah. There's a spring. What? I don't know if Colorado does. You probably, probably do. Yeah, it's it's like it it's it's so generic. But this story wasn't generic, and I'm I don't know. I kind of don't know how to feel about it, but it makes me smile nonetheless. It's we we we've seen stories where um the cops come to someone's house to uh um deliver some sort of warrant or or whatnot but this one is uh <laughs> woman accused of freeing swarm of bees on deputies <laughs> oh a massachusetts woman massachusetts woman is facing multiple assault and battery charges for allegedly releasing a swarm of bees on a group of sheriff's deputies some of them allergic to bee stings as they tried to serve an eviction notice. Rory S. Woods, 55, pled not guilty at her arraignment. Um, her lawyer did not immediately respond to a voicemail. Uh, Hampton County Sheriff's Office deputies were sent to a home in Longmeadow the morning of October 12th and were met by protesters. Uh, Woods, who lives in Hadley, soon arrived in an SUV towing a trailer carrying beehives. She started shaking the hives broke the cover off one, causing hundreds of bees to swarm out 
and initially sting one deputy, Woods, who put on a beekeeper suit to protect herself. And that is an arrest photo right there. That is magic. That is that is just that is beautiful. Um is eventually handcuffed, but not before several more sheriff's department's employees were stung, including three who were allergic to bees. When Woods you can somebody that way. When Woods was told that several officers were allergic to bees, she said, quote, Oh, you're allergic? Good. <laughs> Everyone's fine. Don't worry. We'd be doing this if they weren't. But like you could kill somebody that way. Well, okay, yes, but okay, yes. There's no but there. Okay, yes. Yeah. You shouldn't you shouldn't do that. Because you could kill somebody. <laughs> A deadly bee weapon. Yes, yes. <laughs> did she know? Here's my question. Like, was this premeditated? Like, did she know they were going to be there to serve an eviction notice? So she was like, well, better go get the bees. <laughs> did she right? get the bees just for this purpose? Or like, does she was, this, was it like, does she keep them herself? Or was this a special occasion? Right. And like, did she just happen to be transporting the bees and was like, oh, cops? Or was she like, the cops are coming. Better go get my bees. Like, do you hop on Craigslist and says, yeah, I'm about to be evicted. Does anyone want to sell me some bees? Also, what protesters? It doesn't say anything anything about about this is a terribly incomplete story. This is very poorly researched. It is. And it's the AP, which is just embarrassing. Yeah. But it's so, so check all the protesters over here. They got to go off in the third act. I mean, in, in on the one hand. At least we're, we're not having fucking shootouts with the cops here. Like, what are the cops going to shoot at? Yeah, you can't shoot I mean, the bees. Well, assuming the protesters were there to help her. She could have killed some of them, too. True. Terrified bees don't really know who to attack. They're just fucking terrified. And by the way, oh God. if you are a beekeeper and you have kept these bees safe in a contained hive yeah. all this time, and then you just fucking release them, they're not going to survive. Well, of course not. If the bee stings somebody, it's dead. It's not like wasps it's like or something. Like you're over your bees. Like wasps, so, wasps, they they go and they go and they go. They're fucking psychotic. Bees, it's like, okay, here's my go. Oh god, I'm dead. A cab. All cops are bee stung. <laughs> Ronan says, "I like my cops like I like my coffee, covered in bees." <laughs> it is hard. She, they they will never not be awesome. Ah. Uh-huh. She going to be the bee queen bee in jail. Oh, terrible. That's People are saying that she did know they were coming to evict her so that this does appear to be premeditated. I, you know, I will credit for just novelty here. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever tried this before. I guess I feel like most people that I have known that keep bees really, really love those bees. Yeah. And like, clearly you don't care about your bees. Which are endangered, by the way, so fuck you. Yeah. Of course, like, who I feel bad for in this story is the bees. Yeah, the bee, the the loser in this story is, of course, the bees. Everybody else was an asshole. Yeah, Yeah, everybody else sucks. Except the bees. Except the poor bees. And I hope that, you know, the ones that didn't sting anybody have found a new home and are thriving. Yeah. Although it's winter in Massachusetts, so probably not. They're probably all dead. That's a lovely note to end that story on. Thanks. We're all sad. (laughs) Let's go to Queens for this one. Um, I. I really don't understand what the thought process. I've gotten a wrong order several times. Many times in my life, to a restaurant, you order takeout, you're getting a wrong order eventually. That's what's going to yeah. happen. You have two options there. You can either say, Excuse me, you got my order wrong. Could I have it correctly? Or you just eat the bad order and just fucking go about with it. You know? 
there is no, the, the third, any third option here is a bad idea. And this was especially, this was like, not, I think this was like the 10th option. Like down the list, this must have been like 10th, 20th, maybe even 50th down the list to even think of taking. Uh, let's see. Video shows man setting fire to New York City restaurant, allegedly for getting his food order wrong. Shafel Norbu, 49, allegedly set fire to a Bangladeshi restaurant, uh, Itari Garden and Grill, for not giving him the chicken biryani he requested, serving him something else instead. You give. You can just get that replaced. But it gets better. We got video. We got video. I, like, hey, I didn't order this. And they'll be like, oh, shit. What'd you order? Yeah. Here's, here's the video of. Uh, here we go. He's, he has a, a bucket. He's, first of all, he's looking very not sus just watching. Looking so not suspicious. Got a bucket of gasoline. Like, you know, no, 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 acting like a pointer dog. Now watch it. There it goes. There goes the gasoline. Come on. And whoosh. There he goes. Oh. He sets himself on fire in the process. So good on oh. you, stupid. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the place is somehow still standing. I will tell you that. That's. He went back after they closed? Yeah. Fucking psychotic. Um, video posted on Twitter by the uh, FDNY showed Schaefel Norbo 49 pouring a flammable substance at the entrance of a toddy garden grill before crouching down and igniting a fire. The video also shows the man catching fire for a brief period before putting himself out. According to court documents. Norbu said he bought what he thought was a chicken biryani from the Bangladeshi restaurant when he realized it wasn't. He got upset, threw it away, and allegedly bought a gas can that he threw at the restaurant. Well, no, he didn't buy a, bring a gas can. That's a bucket. That's not a gas can. That's that's a bucket of gas. Um, the fire caused over fifteen hundred dollars in damages, including shattered glass and damage to the air conditioning unit. So now we're gonna go back anyway. What? Like I can like I get. If you're like, I don't want to go back. I'm already home. I already took off my bra. Fuck it. Right. The second my bra's off, I'm done for the day. I'm not going back out. I understand that. Right. But if you were going to go back anyway. Right. And not just, just go, go back. back. And be like, hey, I got the wrong food and solve the problem. Not just go back, though. He had to go and run errands first. Yeah. He had to pick up gas and she had like get like accoutrement. To bring them back here for his little errand. Like it actually would have been less effort to just bring the food back and be like, hey, I got the wrong food. That would have been easier than what you chose to do. Yep. And you wouldn't have set yourself on fire. Yep. Nope. Which is something I generally try to avoid. <laughs> yes. That's just me. Like this just they restaurants will bend over backwards to give you like you say, waiter. This leaf on my salad is slightly darker than all the others. Could you bring me another? And they have to. They hate it, yeah. but they will. They'll be like, oh. You might get a little extra dressing. Right. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. But, like, in this case, what, what do you expect? Like, what the fuck? But like, if they made an honest mistake, in general, they're going to be pretty eager to fix that. Because so, they don't want unhappy customers. That's not good for their business. So first of all, not only are you out the cost of your dinner, which, what, 20 bucks? You know, yeah. We, we, restaurant delivery, tw you know, even takeout. That 20 bucks, you know, nice. You know, so that's gone. You know, I paid $40 to get a pizza delivered today. Um, now you're, you're also out uh, the cost of that gas, which is what, $2,000 for, for the gasoline? And your freedom. Yeah, and uh, yeah, fifteen hundred for the damage you did, the cost of a lawyer, and you're not you're going. That's like when you light you know, building. You have some burns that need medical attention, probably. I don't know if you know this, but if you're in a city and you set a building on fire, 
they take that kind of seriously. I don't also, know like why. New York City, there's cameras in most public places now. Yeah. And so... and you can be as mad about that as you want. But we live in a pro- post-privacy society. Yeah. And if you are out in public, you should assume you're on a fucking no, but, camera but, somewhere. But, but Tara, it's okay. He had a hoodie. That it's he's got a hoodie. No one will ever know it was him. And again, we've gone back to this a few times. Like we are still in a period where if you wear a face mask out in public, most people aren't going to really. Right. You can get away with it. You can still, even though nobody, people are like, ah, I'm fine. I'm not going to wear. Probably like 20% of the population is still doing it. But you can still do it. But yeah, nobody's going to bat an eye if you cover your face right now. So why would you not? You're bad at crime. I mean, clearly this person is a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Since their answer to I got the wrong food was to set the restaurant on fire. Yeah. I've been handed the wrong food and I won't even I've been handed I've I've ordered a steak medium and it's come to me still mooing. And I I don't want to say I have to be talked into sending it back. Right. I I know what it's like. like to... They brought you a live cow. You can't eat that. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, it's really busy and their job's hard. And they're like, send it back. Yeah, I mean, we've both been service workers. We do retail. We know what it's like to, to deal with this. I don't want to fucking make it's already hard enough doing that shit. Yeah. Shit happens. Are you getting fed? Good. Anyway. Next up, this one is uh do you remember Night Court? Oh my god, I used to love Night Court. Do, 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 do. You know, with with the uh, with Harry and then the Bull that show Shannon. Was so fucking good. What? That show was so fucking good. Kids, if if you have never heard of Night Court, I don't know if that show streams anywhere, but you should look it up. Well, okay, we've got a reboot of Night Court. Only it, really? Yeah, it didn't go over quite so well. Mainly oh. because uh it was a real court. Oh. Ohio judge suspended for running courtroom like a game show. Rewarding defendants, quote, brave enough to appear during COVID-19 shutdown. The Ohio Supreme Court this week, quote, immediately and indefinitely suspended a Cleveland municipal judge who authority said had conducted business on the look of Tara's face. <laughs> she is unamused. Um, judge's conduct included offering bizarre deals to defendants when prosecutors were not present on dates that coincided with her birthday, their birthdays, the birthdays of friends, or holidays. Um, on multiple occasions, car joke, she would be amenable, some for a bribe in return for a lenient sentence. In open court, she engaged in dialogues with defendants about accepting kickbacks on fines or arranging hookups for herself and her staff for food and beverages, flooring and storage facilities. Um, she knows somebody's typing everything she says, right? Maybe. Um, it's just a lot of things happened here. It's it's not like, oh, she made some funny comments. That's not a problem. Well, no, no. Um, in March 2020, Judge Michelle Early, the judge in charge of the municipal court system, suspended courthouse activity because of the pandemic. Despite Early's order, Carr did not reschedule cases set on the docket. Rather, despite the courthouse basically being closed, Carr issued warrants for defendants who did not appear in court. Those warrants ordered arrest and set bonds between $2,500 and $10,000. In contrast, our way fines and costs for defendants who were, quote, brave enough to appear in court despite the potential for exposure to COVID-19. When a public defender began to question the fundamental fairness of ordering defendants to appear when the courthouse was listed as officially closed, Carr told the public defender that, quote, not everyone watches the news and the defendant should indeed appear in spite of the order. The public defender left the courtroom. Carr, quote, turned to her staff and mocked him, calling him a little idiot. Later, Carr learned that uh, Matthew Wyoma, the person responsible for scheduling court cases, had earned several had cleared several civil matters from the docket because of the order. Carr in open court 
told her bailiff to tell uh, Woima, I think it's Woima, uh, to get his ass back on that phone and put all her civil cases back on. Um, now, when the newspaper caught her on this and said, are you doing this? Uh, Carr refused to comment, but she did, according to the Ohio, Ohio Supreme Court, grant an interview to a local television station. Therein, according to the high court, she called the newspaper report untrue and reckless. And to be clear, you are not issuing any warrants, a tele television reporter asked. Absolutely not, Carr replied. However, that statement was untrue. <sighs> she was doing deals with, uh, with, um, from the stand for defendants with there's no prosecutor. Um, oh, modern day debtors prison. In another area of concern, the state Supreme Court said Carr admitted at her disciplinary hearing she used warrants and jail time to essentially create a modern day debtors prison. Quote, wow. you notice I'm no longer the bill collector for the clerk's office. I'm not your B-I-T-C-H. See, you get it. Collect your own money. There you go, player. Mm-hmm. Collect your own money, player. Mm-hmm. I'm not your B-I-T-C-H. Run, tell that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How you like them apples? Suckers. <laughs> That's a quote. Um, there's Jeremiah's lack of decorum. You get through law school. Yeah. And then get appointed a judge. Yeah. Like this... Unserious people, you would have you'd have a hard time becoming a judge if oh, you're yeah. just like a fucking moron because you have to get through law school, pass the bar, be a lawyer, and then get appointed to a judgeship. Oh yeah. Well, okay. All you have to do to be appointed to a judgeship is just be really nice to the right person. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that. We, we now have someone on the Supreme Court who never tried a case in court. Technically, you don't even have to be a lawyer. I thought you did. I thought you at least had to be. Nah, they could they just appoint whoever they want. I thought you had to have, like, a Juris Doctorate. Eh. All right. Well, that whole rant I just gave is moot then. Um, despite the dress decorum expectations for the general public, Carr presided over a courtroom wearing workout attire, including tank tops, T-shirts, Above the knee spandex shorts and sneakers. Um, she went. I, mean, I don't care about that shit. What? I don't so much care if she showed up in court. Well, I do care if, if they like insist everybody has to wear like suits and shit, and she's up there. Yeah, if you're expecting the people coming before you to be dressed a certain way, you should obviously lead by example. If she didn't give a fuck, I don't care if you have bike shorts on. If you can do your job. She didn't seem like she could do her job. During a series of proceedings at open court, Carr maintained a dialogue with her staff and defendants about the television series P-Valley, which is set in the Mississippi Strip Club. Um, Carr also referred to one of her bailiffs, Alicia Gray, by the name of the character of that series called Miss Puddin. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, she, she claimed... That, um, as Carr noted above, raised mental orders as an explanation for her conduct. However, the state Supreme Court concluded that her cited disorders, generalized anxiety, and a mood disorder connected sleep apnea, stress, and menopause were not the cause of what occurred. Quote, how does sleep apnea and menopause contribute to lying? <laughs> yeah. Like, the the what you have to understand about American courtrooms, they're kind of individual little fiefdoms. Uh, I read yeah, a, the judge is kind of God. A serial I didn't read. I listened to serial did a podcast about this. Like they, it was actually funnily enough, it was in Cleveland, Ohio. It was in Cleveland courtrooms about how the court system works. The judges can basically do whatever the fuck they want, and they're yeah. used to doing whatever the fuck they want. This normally, they could kind of get away with it. Probably if she hadn't gone to the press or the press hadn't yeah. gotten involved, that might have, she might have, this might have all just kept on as usual. But she had to make them look bad. So that's. And she's only suspended. 
indefinite suspension. It, that's the funny thing. The first, when it went to the lower court, they gave her a two month suspension. And she's oh. like, fuck that. I'm going to appeal. And the Ohio Supreme Court said, okay, you're not a judge anymore. Indefinitely. So, good job. Well done. Congratulations, you played yourself. So originally she got a two month yeah. suspension yeah. for all of that. Yeah. Like you basically just gave a list on like how not to be a judge. Yeah. And she got two months. Hmm. Could have been worse. Could have been a $50 fine and time served. Anybody get the reference? Anybody? Anybody? You're no. too young. You're too young. I'm, I'm not. I just don't get it. Really? You, but you just. $50 fine time served. Mac, what's next on the docket? Really? You just said you watch Night Court all the time and you just, no, really? I did, but it hasn't been on TV in a very long time. Sorry. Killing me here, Small. Um, Sorry. Got some more legal shenanigans. Uh, the Department of Justice had to get involved. Um, normally, in America, we have a very bad racism problem. Many ways. But normally, how it managed to perpetuate itself is... No one is dumb enough to provide evidence, hard written records saying, yes, I am a racist. Because like you can't be you can't be fired because of your race. So what they do is they quietly find another race to fire. Right. They find some other bullshit. Right. And, and you can't claim that thing. However, the it doesn't really work so well when you leave a fucking trail dog uh, doj files suit against rapid city hoteliers uh hotelier ho hoteliers am i saying that right hotelier hotelier whatever that announced native american ban i need the link oh yeah that's right you do i'm getting ahead of myself i'm feeling myself here now. i feel myself here um Department of Justice uh, Wednesday filed a federal discrimination suit against two rapid uh, city hoteliers alleging steps taken to ban Native Americans from property that violated their civil rights. Um, federal authorities cite the loss. thing to do in South fucking Dakota. Federal employees, uh, federal authorities cite the lawsuit stems from an email chain in which, uh, what's her name? Connie Ure and her sons, Nicholas, uh, allegedly told various hotel owners and managers in Rapid City that she doesn't want to allow Native Americans on property belonging to her. Quote, I really do not want to allow Natives on property. Every time we have problems, I call the police with it. The first thing they ask is what nationality he or she and I, and 90% of the time I have to say Native, and we call at least once a week. They walk around with guns. The problem is they do not, we do not know the nice ones from the bad Natives, so we just have to say no to them. Um. Following the email, is that familiar to anybody else? Is anybody else getting flashbacks to a gold escalator? Yeah. <laughs> Following the email to which Nicholas quote did not disavow or otherwise disagree with, Connie allegedly posted to Facebook that Native Americans would no longer be welcome to the hotel or sports bar. Court documents allege the following day: two Native Americans entered the hotel and inquired about rates. As the booking process was underway, the employee alleged refused to rent the rooms, citing a policy which was not right at the time. The rooms could not be rented to locals, quote unquote, a policy which came from Nick. Um, so, yeah, 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 the email chain, all right, for what the email chain, maybe that could have been like, okay, this is out of the public eye. Right. Which, you know, so no expectation that the public, you put it on Facebook. Everybody can see Facebook. And then according to the article continuing, you put that shit in a practice. Yeah, you, you did. You, you said you didn't just say the thing. You did the thing. My question is, and I could get myself in trouble here, but like. Uh. What was your determination? What were the factors that let you determine that a person trying to check in was a Native American? 
like do, do, I, do you try to do some, like some like like the tomahawk chop or something and see if they respond or some right. other racist Are you, like, bullshit people because you can be part native american and part something else and either not look native at all well i went woo 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 and he didn't do nothing so maybe he's not a native it, like what were your criteria or you know right. Latin people can look like they might be late Latin Native American yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Like if you're just like everybody with dark skin and black hair can't book here. Oh, mean shall. Welcome to the hotel xenophobia. <laughs> <laughs> I know it does it count as xenophobia if you're afraid of people that were somewhere before you? Oh. Yeah, technically we're the xenos. Right. Like, is that still xenophobia if you're afraid of the people that were? Uh. <laughs> that one scans so perfectly, too. So, yeah, now yeah. you're in, now you're in trouble. You're, you're going to you get evidence. Fucking. Ev I mean, the good news is you're not going to have to worry about renting rooms to Native Americans much longer because you're not going to have hotels much longer. Right. Jesus Christ. You You're gonna have to sell them to cover your legal fees. Just what the fuck? Ugh, more what the fuck? Hey, we're back to Cleveland again. Um, is this another week with no Florida? I don't know yet. We've got a couple more. No, no, yeah, it looks like no Florida. They're saving it up. There's gonna be a big something pretty soon. Big something. This is probably the worst case of wrong number ever. Cleveland father accidentally calls Westlake business attempting to hire someone to murder his son. Whoa. That's right, Grady. Westlake, Ohio, Westlake police are investigating and they say a Cleveland father accidentally called a business to hire someone to murder his son. Police say they received a call at 1045 from October 13th, oh, on October 13th from a business. Uh, to report, yes, I know. Hi, gosh. Oh, he wants attention. Uh, to report suspicious voicemails. An employee was alarmed because the messages indicated a man wanted to put a $5,000 hit on another person. All right, first of all, um, you're cheap. You cheap motherfucker. Yeah. I wouldn't even break somebody's <laughs> legs for five grand. No. Like, you know, I might, I, I might, like, you know, leave a lit pile of dog shit on their on their front lawn for fit for fit, five grand because you're going to cover my legal expenses for that i'm not killing somebody for five grand no police said discover detectives discovered the man mistiled an individual's phone and accidentally left the messages the 58 year old man from cleveland admitted to making the calls was arrested uh according to the police who say the man blamed poor judgment from a previous argument with his son and alcohol for making the calls. Look, no, no. I have been drunk many times. We've, we've discussed this before. I have never decided to call and put out a $5,000 hit on someone because I was deep in my cups. I just, I, I never. Yeah, I don't think I've ever tried to put a hood on, hit on somebody because I had, like, too many Captain and Cokes. Like who? Who the fuck murders people for five grand? Yeah, I feel like you're not going to get quality work for five grand. Like, okay, sure, you you pay off. Designers have a saying: you can. There's cheap, fast, and good. You can pick two. <laughs> you can't have all three. Ah, <laughs> uh, hello. I just it. Damn, your own son too. That's low. Oh, can you imagine being that kid? I don't know how old he is, but I mean, that's not how a friends and family discount works, by the way. Um. <laughs> well, I'm like, who was he trying to call? Right? Was there like somebody on back? Well, no, back page doesn't exist anymore. Uh, something on like you know Craigslist or some shit, Facebook Marketplace. I don't know. Who are you going to call? I have no idea. Is is there like... <sighs> like 
If I was a terrible person and wanted to pay to have somebody murdered, I wouldn't know where to start. Rowdy's like, hello, dad, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. <laughs> hello, dad. I'm always concerned. Like, what kind of person were you already that you know who to call? I know how to handle this situation. I wouldn't know who to call to put out a hit on somebody. All right, the last one this week. We have many stories on the show lately, more and more of people misbehaving on the airplanes. You know, I flew, I was flying, mm -hmm. obviously, yesterday, and I was in Bradley International Airport in Hartford, and they have, like, at TSA security now, they have a little video about with like the head of the TSA being like, we've had a lot of people being violent fucking psychopaths <laughs> on airplane. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing. Like they have to talk to you about that in the airport. Like, please don't go on a zombie spree in the airport. That's that's bad. Well, this this guy, I think he was going for the leaderboard on this one. British Airways passengers stripped naked, defecated on floor of plane, and smeared feces into curtains while running at other passengers. British Airway passengers reportedly stripped from their waist down. I said guy, it might be, they, they don't give a gender here. Defecated on the floor of the plane and then smeared themselves in their own feces before charging at other passengers. <clears throat> the horrifying incident allegedly occurred while passengers were still boarding a British Airways uh, Boeing 777-300. While people were boarding. What? There's no room to run around while people are boarding. Well, there is if you're holding out poop at them. They'll make room. Yeah. yeah that true. shit will part like the Red Sea. British Airways has seemingly confirmed the nauseating episode with a spokesman saying the airline has apologized to passengers after the flight was delayed so the new plane could be found while the contaminated ca cabin was clean cleaned. Rumors of the incident started to spread last week after a leaked copy of what appears to be an aircraft maintenance log explaining what had happened started to go viral on social media. Logbook reads, quote, During boarding, passengers stripped from waist down and defecated on rear galley floor. He sat it. Okay, it was a dude. He sat in it and rubbed it into galley floor and aisle carpets. He walked into his own excrement and started running up aisle. He smeared his arms from hand to elbow in fecal matter and aggressively ran at other passengers, flicking fecal matter around and up to door four over seats as he went. Logbrook uh, noted the curtains, uh, the curtains in the carpet were deeply contaminated, and a deep clean was required. Airplane was yeah, no, you just got to set that plane on fire. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, it's, demons and poop fire. That's how you deal. Yeah. With it. He's got to call a loss. Just you're just. Fuck. What hell. happened here? Yeah. All that. And keep in mind, number one, we wouldn't have known this had happened had not for an engineer actually keeping fucking logs. They, yeah. They did not let this go to the news. They didn't want everyone to know that Poop McPooperson had pooped all over the fucking plane. This is, this is just, just poop everywhere. <laughs> oh. Who could do this? Why would you do like I, what? What were you on? Why? Yeah. Those don't sound like fun drugs. What the hell happened here? Was this, was this, I can't tell if this was like really bad drugs or a hissy fit or both. Or is this like the kids that are throwing mashed potatoes at art, but you completely got it wrong? They're not throwing it at, you're not, you're, you're ruining plexiglass. Get that shit at Home Depot, 12 bucks. Congratulations. Did you like learn about that through some horrible game of telephone and you were trying to protest something? Mm -hmm. Oh, Frankie says this shit won't fly. Yeah, literally quite, quite literally. 
Jesus Christ. We, I don't like other humans that much. Like, how in the world? Like, I know. Increasingly, I find that I just find other humans exhausting. Like, I want y'all to have nice lives. Mm. I want you to thrive. But increasingly, I don't really want to be around you. Because you frighten me. <sighs> Poop, for God's sake. Okay, I guess... I guess the first thing we've learned this week is that we are never more than two or three generations away, apparently, from flinging our own poop. We, we, we go for like a few years and we're like, have the humans stopped doing this yet? No, they did it again. Shit. Literally. Like, we, we, we ever said we've, we've come from apes and shit. They were doing this. We haven't yeah. figured out how to not do this now. It's been how many thousands of years? I don't understand people who who are willing to have that much contact with their own poop. I'm not like don't you just want to make it not well, like yeah. just make it go away? Like I. We no, have, we've learned that if you're going to call for a hit, maybe you want to Google the number first. Yeah. And save up. Yeah, because 5K, come on. They're, they're not pull, even pulling a single fingernail for 5K. That's insulting. Yeah. Um, we've learned if you're going to be really racist, the only way to get away with it in America is to not admit it out loud. You stupid. I mean, like, it's pretty easy to get away with. Right, but you couldn't even clear that hurdle. You were that fucking stupid. You could you you couldn't like you were already evil, but now you're stupid and evil. So that's not a pretty not a, combo. Way to go through life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've learned that um maybe a little bit of decorum in, in, in court is a good thing and and not, you know, just acting like it, it, it's 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 study hall that's the that's what i was thinking of it took me all i think like, in the back of my head i was like what does this remind me of what the fu fucking study hall yes yeah, seeing because the teacher had checked out y'all had checked out that's what this reminded me of nobody gave a fuck um we've learned that maybe if you don't get what you order send it back yeah don't set the restaurant on fire. I'm really going to solve your core problem. Sometimes I sit here doing this, I think, and I go back. How many times did I have to say phrases that in my youth I never imagined would have to be put together as words? Yeah. And finally, we learned this week, if you have problems with law enforcement, don't involve bees. There's another phrase I never thought I'd have to fucking say. Poor bees. Poor bees. What are they doing? They're dying off because we're polluting everything. They're trying desperately to keep us alive by pollinating our fucking crops and shit. And what do we do? We we wake them up really loudly. We scare the shit out of them and we throw them at the cops. Like if I was the bees, I would just quit. I would find a new gig. Let us just not deal with the food anymore. Just fuck us. You know what? Pollinate your own shit, bipeds. We're going on strike. We're fuck you. Like Frank, Frank stung that guy. His whole asshole came pulled out. Fuck you. 